Well, good morning, my friends. I hope your day has started off well and on the right foot. Here in Central Florida, it is very beautiful right now. Breeze is blowing slightly, thank God. It's very green, the skies are very blue, the birds are chirping. It's gonna get desperately hot though, before you know it. I'm sure the humidity is like 150% already. Is that even possible? I think it is in Florida, yeah. The other place I lived that was really humid like that was Minnesota. That was really, because there's so many lakes. Oh, it's called the land of 10,000 lakes. Here I am talking like I have nothing else to say, but I do have a few things I want to I want to talk about. One of them is usefulness. Usefulness. Well, you know, I, I've, I've briefly, you know, harped on it a few times. It's important to have some kind of value uh, to be able to make a contribution in society. It's good to know that you're needed or wanted and that others respect you because um, they can see something in you. But, you know, one of the things I've noticed is that while, while there's a good number of people that can comment on the virtues, there's not a whole lot of chatter about... I, I use the word chatter because I hear these birds just chirping over here. I didn't say chirp, but it did make me think of the word chatter. Uh, there's not a whole lot of chatter about uh, the people who will... Who are, who are very averse to your usefulness, you know? And they'll do anything they can to take you out and bring you down. But before I get too far into that, I had read a page in a book this morning. This is a book just full of miscellaneous facts and trivial items. And this page said, it was, it was entitled Loony Laws. Why do we like hearing about strange laws that are still in the books? I think part of it is because we wonder what spawned the necessity to create some of these laws. Are they still in existence? Are they still being upheld and why? And, and a lot of times it's the, it's the things that come together in these laws that kind of leave you, you, you scratching your head wondering what in the world went down that they thought they had to write this up. Okay, so here's, here's a few. Listen to these, you might live in some of these places. If you do, let me know and tell me if you already knew this or not. But anyway, here's the first one. In Brooklyn, New York, it's illegal to let a dog sleep in your bathtub. Hmm. In Atlanta, it's illegal to tie a giraffe. <laughs> in Atlanta, it's illegal to tie a giraffe to a street light or telephone pole. Dogs are okay. Well harassment is a federal offense punishable by up to $10,000 in fines. Hmm. How would you do that? A monkey was once tried and convicted for smoking a cigarette in, in, in Indiana. That's where I'm from. I used, to want, I used to want a monkey. I used to want a pet monkey. Believe it or not, there's a few places here in Lakeland where people have had pet, like a pet chimpanzee. I was... I was, I used to be a meter reader. And when I was being trained, one of the veterans in that, in that department told me, he goes, yeah, this house, we were walking to this, this yard and this, he goes, this house right here, the people who used to live here, they used to have a chimpanzee chained up in a tree. Now he wasn't chained to the tree or he had roaming, you know, room to roam, but uh, he was on some kind of a tether and he was, he was up in the tree. You could see him. Well, that's just inhumane to me, but nevertheless, there, there were, there's a number of people in my town they had apes or monkeys. In fact, there was a, there was a problem with uh, escaped monkeys out in North Lakeland, Lakeland at one time or another. And they're still, apparently, still out there somewhere. Okay, I, I, went, off on a, I went off on a tangent there, didn't I? Okay, in St. Louis, Missouri, it's illegal to drink beer from a bucket when you're sitting at the curb. Picture that. Snoring is legal in Massachusetts only when all bedroom windows are closed and locked. Okay. Kentucky citizens are required by state law to bathe at least once a year. You know, I've only been to Kentucky a few times, and I don't... I, I, maybe this is why. I don't know. I, I would have been really young, and maybe it was etched in my memory. I don't know. Do you take a bath more than once a year? I certainly hope so. Okay, it's illegal to ship live mice through the U.S. mail. Man, those laws are so strict. Those no wonder they get so upset. 
Okay, in Downey, California, more than two police officers are prohibited from gathering at the same donut shop at the same time. Okay, listen, I, I kind of understand this because I work for the city and the public is always watching. They're very critical and they think that they know what's right, what's wrong for you. They, they just make a lot of assumptions. So they might, I can see that. This is not as loony as they purport. Okay, in Cleveland, Ohio, it's illegal to catch mice without a hunting license. In, in Kentucky, another one from Kentucky, man. They really, they're really they hammering them. In Kentucky, it's illegal to marry... Oh, my goodness. In, I really haven't read these too much. I, I thought I had, but... I, in Kentucky, it's illegal to marry your wife's grandmother. In Yukon, Oklahoma, it's illegal for patients to pull their dentist teeth. Oh, they just suck all the fun out of everything, don't they? In Sarasota, Florida, yes, I've been there. In Sarasota, Florida, it's illegal to wear a swimsuit while singing in a public place. That's asking for a lot. I would assume that some of the resorts down there on the water would have, or, you know, some of the venues would have karaoke at the very least. In Oklahoma, you can be fined for making funny faces at dogs. Isn't that what we do all the time? Man, in some states it's illegal to dance to the it's illegal to dance to the Star Spangled Banner. Can you dance to the Star Spangled Banner? I can't dance at all. I don't even try, but maybe that's why I don't I like the imagination. It's, Ill, it's against the law to drink beer in Cedar City, Utah, if your shoelaces are untied. Well, I don't understand making a law about it, but I can... No, I don't. I don't understand making a law about it, but I can see the calamities that would arise. Those are, those are funny. Maybe you've heard of a few that I have not mentioned here. Let me know. Okay, on to what I was talking about before, usefulness. There, there are people out there who would love to destroy your usefulness. And here's a short story about a collie. Well, uh, listen, this, this story is by James Thurber. It's called The Trial of the Old Watchdog. It has to do with a collie. I used to love collies when I was growing up because I grew up watching old lassie serials. You know what I'm talking about? My mom, my, yeah, I guess these are stuff that my, this is stuff that my mom liked when she was a kid. And so I watched, kind of like the Lone Ranger. I used to watch Lassie. And, um, and I loved Collie. I used to want one so bad. And you didn't see that many of them. And you don't see that many of them now. I think you see more now than you did even then. But they were, you know, they're really intelligent dogs. I'd see them on my paper route. And believe it or not, in Bartow, which is right down the road from us, there was a, a house down there that my brother used to, he used to mow their lawn. He used to do their landscaping. And the, the people who lived there had a collie, a, a, yeah, not a border collie, but just a collie, like they're like Black like Lassie. And this dog was a descendant of the Lassie in the Lassie movies and Lassie TV series. What I mean, there's a number of them, but they're all they all come from the same line apparently. And this dog was one of them. Anyway, so here's here's a story by James Thurber called The Trial of the Old Watchdog. James Serber wrote The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. So his short stories are very odd, very bizarre, and fable-like. So listen to this one. The Trial of the Old Watchdog. An old experienced collie, who had been a faithful country watchdog for many years, was arrested one summer's day and accused of the first-degree murder of a lamb. Actually, the lamb had been slain by a notorious red fox, who had planted the still warm body of his victim in the collie's kennel. The trial was held in a kangaroo court presided over by Judge Wallaby. The jury consisted of foxes, and all the spectators were foxes. A fox named Renard was prosecuting attorney. Morning, Judge, he said. God bless you, boy, and good luck, replied Judge Wallaby jovially. A poodle named Bo, an old friend and neighbor of the collie, represented the accused watchdog. Good morning, Judge, said the poodle. Now, I don't want you to be too clever, the judge warned him. Cleverness should be confined to the weaker side. That's only fair. 
A blind woodchuck was the first creature to take the stand, and she testified that she saw the collie kill the lamb. The witness is blind, protested the poodle. No personalities, please, said the judge severely. Perhaps the witness saw the murder in a dream or a vision. This would give her testimony the authority of revelation. I wish to call a character witness, said the poodle. We have no character witnesses, said Reynard smoothly, but we have some charming character assassins. One of these, a fox named Burroughs, was called to the stand. I didn't actually see this lamb kill or kill this lamb, said Burroughs, but I almost did. That's close enough, said Judge Wallaby. Objection, barked the poodle. Objection overruled, said the judge. It's getting late. Has a jury reached a verdict? The four fox of the jury stood up. We find the defendant guilty, he said, but we think it would be better to acquit him nonetheless. If we hang the defendant, his punishment will be over. But if we acquit him of such dark crimes as murder, concealing the body, and associating with poodles and defense attorneys, Nobody will ever trust him again. He will be suspect all the days of his life. Hanging is too good for him and much too quick. Guilty by exoneration, Reynard cried. What a lovely way to end his usefulness. And so the case was dismissed and court was adjourned and everybody went home to tell about it. The moral? Thou shalt not blindfold justice by pulling the wool over her eyes. Now, you can be useful, and it's good to be useful. You should strive for usefulness. But be very wary. Be very cautious. Be suspect. Don't be the suspect. Understand that there are people out there who will do anything, say anything, to take you down. And there's going to be plenty of cohorts. Because people love to jump in. It's that tribal mentality, you know? Because they want to go home and be able to talk about it. It's the only way some people can feel like they're a part of something. So you have to be careful of people who want to follow the pack or be part of one. Maybe that's the takeaway. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't be useful. Just be wise. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you thought of all this. And um, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And share this with other people. If you are interested in supporting this channel, I'll leave a link down below to make it real easy for you to do. You don't have to, but it will always be greatly appreciated. All right. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Look both ways before you cross the road. All right. Have a good one.